Hello, everybody, and welcome to our 2019 Congressional Reception Attendee Webinar. I want to thank all of you for joining us. Um, we're so glad you could join us for the call this morning and now also that you'll be with us in Washington, D.C. next week on July 24th. At this point, I'm going to turn over the presentation to um, the first of our two interns, Mitch Kelly, who will be going through the first set of slides and then the next slides will be gone over by um, Joe Lapidus, who is our other intern. And I should have introduced myself. This is Kate Kelly. I'm a staff person at Monarch, and I think many of us have um, emailed or um, been chatting about the event. So I'm going to turn it over to Mitch, and um, we will have plenty of time at the end to, um, to answer any questions that you might have. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Mitch Kelly. Thank you again for joining uh, the webinar. Uh, all right, well, we'll get started. So just before we start, uh, please, you know, take note of, you know, who to reach out to if you have any questions about anything um, from the webinar or about the or, uh, reception in general, um, either Kate, me, or Jill, uh, who's going to talk in a little bit. Um, and here's our contact information in case you don't already have it. So just an agenda for the webinar. We're going to go over the theme. Oh, hi, Elizabeth. <laughs> hi. Sorry about that. No, the computer. Right. So for the agenda for the webinar, we're going to go over the theme. Uh, we're going to go over the policy priorities, the goals for the day. We're going to talk about the actual agenda uh, for the reception. Uh, we're going to give an overview of our expected speakers. Uh, we're going to talk about some expectations for the event, uh, we'll, which will be helpful, especially for people who have not attended before. Uh, we're going to talk about transportation, uh, social media, checklists that you all should have before the event. We're also going to hear from uh, people who, uh, a couple of people who have attended several times in the past. Elizabeth Rogers is one of them. Um, and then at the end, we can take questions from you all. So um, just the layout of the webinar. All right, so I'm sure many of you already know this, but the theme for this year's reception is Opportunity Starts at Home, Building a Necessary and Secure Foundation for Healthy Communities. So the Opportunity Starts at Home campaign was actually created by the National Low Income Housing Coalition, um, and we have here a description of it. It's a long-term multi-sector campaign to meet the rental housing needs of the nation's low-income people. So our theme is kind of in partnership with Opportunity Starts at Home. And then some sub-themes we have below, uh, housing is a right, housing is health care, and housing creates healthy communities. So, you know, you're going to be seeing a lot of those sub-themes on the day of the event, um, either from the national speakers or the impact speakers. Those are going to be kind of constant themes throughout the day. So just going into our policy priorities, so this year we have very focused policy priorities, specific asks of the elected officials. Um, so we're going to kind of go over that now. So first, we're going to request that our elected officials support a $217 million increase in funding for the McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Grants. The McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Grants uh, are really vital for uh, delivering shelter and homeless services uh, to homeless people around the country. We're also asking that elected officials oppose any replacement of the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, that eliminates Medicaid expansion. Medicaid expansion is vital to make sure that all people, especially low-income people and people experiencing homelessness, have the health care services that they need to stay healthy. Um, our next policy priority uh, is protecting and expanding the Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program to help connect families to areas of opportunity. The Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher, I'm sure many of you know what that is um, or even deal with it on a daily basis. It's one of the most effective ways to reduce uh, family poverty, childhood poverty. It contributes to stronger communities. Um, it's an incredibly effective way to make sure that people can have safe, accessible, uh, and affordable housing. So just our policy priorities continued. We're asking that our elected officials ensure that there is effective um, 
enforcement of the Fair Housing Act, making sure that jurisdictions across the United States have the resources they need to comply with and enforce the Fair Housing Act, uh, which we've seen uh, slightly under attack recently. Uh, our next policy priority, uh, our last two actually have to do with housing development. So these two programs kind of go into that. We're asking that they expand and improve the low-income housing tax credit to make sure that resources can be delivered to uh, across the United States to different developments, making sure that there's an adequate supply of affordable housing um, and really combating that undersupply of affordable housing. And then lastly, we're asking that elected officials fund a $5 billion expansion of the National Housing Trust Fund um, in any infrastructure package. There's a few of these proposals already out there. Um, Maxine Waters is one individual who's proposed expanding the National Housing Trust Fund, but several other people have as well. And that's also vital to make sure that development of affordable housing is, is feasible. So going into the goals for the day, uh, really the goal of the congressional reception, again, is to show elected officials the importance of a safe, accessible, and affordable home. Uh, and expanding the supply uh, and accessibility of affordable housing is only possible from you know, increased funding for like these programs that we highlighted earlier, um, among many other programs, of course. Uh, we think that these are incredibly effective programs and if elected officials increase funding for these programs that it will absolutely expand the supply of affordable housing. And then just again a little overview, uh, every year 300 plus individuals from New Jersey. Uh, we definitely have some people not from New Jersey, uh, but most of, most of the attendees are from New Jersey. Uh, we have them travel down to DC to show their commitment to these programs and the importance of these programs. So we're gonna go over an agenda for the day of the congressional reception. And we have a little asterisk in there. Please don't hold us exactly to these times or get, get upset if these times are not exactly what happens. These are what we're expecting. Um, and you never know what happens with traffic or, or other conditions, of course. So we expect that the buses will leave all stops starting at 6.30 and for certain stops at 7.30. Um, and we're going to send out more information on buses. I know a lot of you are probably wondering that. Um, and, and we're going to talk about buses in a little bit as well. Uh, but the, we ask that if your bus is leaving at 630, you get there at 6 o'clock uh, to be ready to go, get on the bus, uh, you know, get prepared to go to D.C. And if your bus is leaving at 730, we ask that you get to the stop by 7 o'clock. So in D.C., uh, we estimate that Y'all will get there between 11.30 and noon. Uh, when you arrive, you'll get your lunch. Everyone is given a lunch when they come to the reception. Uh, pretty soon after everyone arrives, we're gonna have a welcome from the CEO of Monarch, uh, Thaisa Kelly. Uh, then we're gonna have uh, Mike Kaprowski talk. Uh, he is the campaign director, um, the national director for Opportunity Starts at Home. Uh, then we're going to get started pretty soon after that on the impact speakers. So impact speakers are individuals who have personally experienced homelessness, who have agreed to share their story and really discuss the importance of these uh, programs that we highlighted earlier. Um, and then elected officials will also make appearances uh, scattered throughout the afternoon. And then towards the end of the day, we're going to have the closing remarks from Thaisa. And then by 4 p.m., we hope that um, everyone will depart for your buses so you guys can get home as early as possible. Um, we are expecting that the buses will make a stop on the way home for dinner. So please make sure if you're coming, uh, you bring your own uh, money uh, for your dinner because that is something that we're not providing. And then we hope that all buses will get to their destinations or their final destinations between 8.30 and 9.30 at night. But again, it's really hard to predict what it will be like with traffic, especially to and from uh, DC. Um, yeah. So this is just an overview of our speakers for the day. Um, again, uh, we have uh, national speakers, we have elected officials, and we have impact speakers. National speakers, we have Mike Kaprowski. Again, he's the National Director of Opportunity Starts at Home campaign, um, the campaign that we're working in partnership with our 
for our theme. We also have Portia Reddick White. She is in the she's from the National Education Association for Government Relations, and she's also an Opportunity Starts at Home Campaign Steering Committee member. Uh, so for elected officials, uh, all elected officials have been invited to attend. Uh, not all have committed to attend. We hope that most of them do, but we have several firm. Um, uh, we have several representatives who have already committed to attending at a certain time, which is great. You should have gotten an email from Kate uh, either yesterday or, or a little bit earlier um, talking about reaching out to your elected official. Uh, whether they're coming or not, it's a great reminder. Um, if they're coming, they're hopefully going to be really glad they're coming. And if they're not, hopefully they're, they'll uh, consider uh, making a time to come. And then lastly, we have impact speakers. So again, we have an impact speaker for each congressional district. This year, we just have one speaker. Um, we also have a speaker for each senator. So there's 14 speakers total. Um, and they all are pretty great and pretty have uh, have pretty um, inspiring stories. So I think y'all will really uh, enjoy listening to them. Uh, and I think the elected officials will uh, too, which is of course their goal. So I'm gonna pass it on to Jill now, who's taking on the slides now. Uh, but yeah, it was great talking to all of you and all right, thanks. Hi everyone, so we're just gonna go over the event expectations right now. Um, we are expecting over 300 people. Right now we do have over 300 people registered, so we are expecting um, a few more before registration closes on Friday, July 19th at noon. So make sure if you know anybody who would like to register that they do that before then and do it quickly because spots are starting to fill up. Um, I know this was mentioned before, but for food, a box lunch will be served upon arrival in Washington, D.C. Water and other snacks will be provided on the buses. And then once again, depending on timing, buses are expected to stop for a bathroom and food break once on the way um, to D.C. and once on the way back from D.C. If, back from D.C. Um, just make sure that you remember this is all depending on timing um, and traffic. So if there is a lot of traffic, then there won't be making that stop. Um, for your attire, please wear clothes that are comfortable for weather in July. It's hot and humid, and that walk to Dirksen um, is a, about 15 minutes. So just be prepared to wear comfortable shoes as well. For transportation, if you're driving yourself, please arrive to Dirksen Senate Auditorium by 11.30 a.m. If you're traveling by bus, you will receive a confirmation email on Monday about your bus stop, um, location time, and other important information regarding the bus. Buses are not wheelchair accessible. If you need accessibility, please contact us as soon as possible so we can make any accommodations for you so that you are as comfortable as possible. Trips from New Jersey to DC usually take four to five hours depending on the departure city. Um, and just please be prepared for unexpected delays. And once again, snacks and drinks will be provided on each bus. Each bus will have two bus captains. If you have any questions or concerns during your bus ride, please let one of them know. They're there to help and to answer any of your questions. There will be materials passed out and videos about the congressional reception, our sponsors, and our federal policy priorities shown on the buses as well. Um, there will be a bathroom available on each bus, so please use the bathroom before leaving in case of any unexpected issues. And each bus is expected to make a stop on the trip to DC and trip to New Jersey, but this may be changed. Um, here are the bus locations. Um, if you're getting on in Cranford, it's at Lincoln Ave School, Edison, Kilmer Homes, Freehold Collaborative Support Program Office, Galloway Mental Health Association in Atlantic County, Madison, um, Drew University, Newark, St. John's Church, Peterborough, Advanced Housing, Trenton, Catholic Charities, Trenton, Vineland, New Horizons Community Wellness Center, and Westville Catholic Charities, Camden. Um, regarding social media, we encourage everybody to post pictures, videos, any other content during or after the congressional reception. Be sure to use the hashtag NJHillDay and tag OpStartsAtHome. Um, join the 2019 Congressional Reception Facebook event on Monarch Housing Associates page to receive updates about the event. And please indicate that you are going and invite your friends to attend as well.
this is just a checklist um, for things that we suggest um, you bring on the trip. If you're taking a bus, just make sure you receive that confirmation by Monday, July 22nd. Once again, if you do not receive this email, please contact Mitch or I. Um, respond going on that Facebook event page. Bring any snacks you may want for the bus. Uh, bring some money if you'd like to purchase additional food. Um, bring a charger. Post about your plans to attend the congressional reception using the hashtags. And after the event, make sure to fill out a feedback survey, which will be given out on all buses or emailed to you. Uh, so right now we're going to have Victoria um, speak about some tips from past attendees and Elizabeth Rogers as well. If you guys want to come on to the call. And... Great. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Tori Bure from the National Low Income Housing Coalition. Um, I'm so grateful that you all are planning on coming to uh, this event this year. Um, I was able to attend last year and was really impressed by the turnout. Um, I know that members of Congress really take into consideration um, people that show up and they need to hear from their constituents. Um, a lot of their key considerations about what actions to take on bills and legislation really come from listening uh, to their constituents. And so the fact um, that you'll be in DC uh, showing your presence uh, to the members of Congress is going to have a really big impact. Um, we are at the national level uh, advocate for the lowest income populations, um, and we're so happy that you'll be advocating uh, for various housing policies, um, including expanding the National Housing Trust Fund um, and increasing, uh, making sure that the um, HUD budget has the higher, highest allocations possible, uh, which is very important. Um, in New Jersey, there is a shortage of 200,000 rental homes affordable and available for extremely low income renters. Um, and the annual household income needed to afford a two bedroom rental home at HUD fair market is $58,000. Um, and 72% of extremely low income renter households have severe cost burden. So it's really essential um, that you guys are coming to DC to really speak up for uh, the people that have uh, the lowest incomes that need more representation um, and that uh, the members of Congress just uh, see that you're there. Great. Um, thank you, Tori, for that perspective. This is Kate Kelly. I'm now going to turn it over to Elizabeth Rogers. Hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Rogers. I am the Safe Haven Case Manager from Homeless Solutions. And I went, I had the pleasure of attending the Congressional Reception last year, and I was very impressed by the way everyone came and spoke and how the congressional constituents came. And I think that we really had an impact last year, and I'm hoping that this year we'll be able to have an even bigger impact. Um, some ideas for the day. When you're getting on the bus, as previously mentioned, you should definitely try to use the restroom beforehand because if there is any issue on the bus, it can lead to a not so pleasant experience in that bathroom. Um, another thing to take into consideration is that it is a very long trip. I would recommend maybe bringing uh, headphones with you for after the video so you can listen to something if there's nothing else working on the, t on the TV. Um, it is very important that we are there because it show, we have power in numbers and there are far too many people, especially in New Jersey, living at a but, excuse me, I'm sorry, um, living, paying more than 50% of their, their income for rent because there is such a lack of affordable housing available. Um, I see it every day with my clients. It is very difficult to find housing when it, you're trying to find something in fair market rent when everything is above fair market rent. So I look forward to seeing everyone there and I'm open if anyone has any questions. Thank you very much, um, Elizabeth, for that perspective. Can you guys hear me? Yes, okay, sorry, I'm just checking here. Um, 
thank you both to Tori and Elizabeth for giving your perspective. I think it's helpful to hear from those outside of Monarch who are, you know, have been in the past or planning to attend. And thank you to Jill and Mitch for your hard work and for putting this presentation together. I we if you look over under your GoToWebinar control panel, there is a box where you can ask questions. Um, I've been answering two questions as we've been um, moderating the panel and one question was, will these slides be available after the webinar? Yes, they will be. We are also recording the webinar, so that will be available as well. We will probably, if not today, tomorrow morning, send out a PDF of the PowerPoint slides and also a recording of the webinar so that you can review it again or share with others you know who are joining us in DC but couldn't be on the call today. The second question was, will there be Wi-Fi on the bus? To the best of our knowledge, there will be Wi-Fi on the bus. I think it's just important for everyone to keep in mind that depending on how many people are using the Wi-Fi, it may not be um, as fast a connection as we're used to. And you know, we can't guarantee that it will be working, but the bus company has told us that they will make it available. So at this point, any other questions people have, you could um, type them in or um, I can just check. I know there's another mechanism. People can raise their hand and ask a question too, um, but I, I don't, um, I don't see that anyone else has asked one. But you know, we're here, um, you know, for the next week or so until we leave for DC on the 24th, and are happy to answer any questions you have. I can't emphasize enough, you know, how excited we are to be heading to DC. Um, next week on the 24th and really just thank all of you for registering and coming we know it's a long day you know many of you are taking time off of work or away from family to be with us but it is very important and we appreciate that you're making this effort so thank you very much and we look forward to seeing you on the up oh, i see i just got one more question let me try to answer this um someone's asking if we can go back to the slide with the phone numbers I don't know, uh, Mitch or Jill, if you can go back to that slide. Um, yep, just a second. I'm gonna switch over and let Mitch do that so he may, may be the one who um, says um, the final goodbye and sign off of this webinar. Hold on one minute and we'll get that slide up to all of you. All right, here we go. Yep, it's a good thing to have. <laughs> Um, oh, I see there's one more slide. Um, will there be food for purchase, someone who has dietary restrictions? So we've gotten that question from a few other people. That is a very good question to have. Once we, if time allows and we're able to stop on the way down to Washington, then of course you'd be able to use any money you brought with you to purchase something, whether you need something vegan or gluten-free, whatever you might need. At the event, we are serving box lunches. As you can imagine, we have 300 people to serve lunch to, so it's just the most efficient way. Once you get into the Dirksen Center Auditorium, there is not anywhere to buy lunch. So if you have specific dietary restrictions, my best advice to you is probably to bring something that meets your needs. I just would hate for you to be relying on the box lunch and have it not be something that you're able to eat. Um, we can do our best to work with the caterer to see if there are any specialized meals. My concern is with feeding lunches to 300 people, I, just, I don't know if we'll be able to effectively set those aside for you. And then of course, on the way home, you know, there will be time, they, they most always stop for dinner, um, even though it may mean a little bit of a later arrival time home, so you'd have the opportunity then. But as far as lunch goes, if you have any specific dietary restrictions, um, I realize it's a little bit of an inconvenience, but I would plan to bring um, what you need for your lunch. All right, if nothing else, I'm going to um, end this call and we look forward to seeing you on the 24th. Thanks very much, everybody. <laughs>